Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Hope uh, that this session brings much prosperity and wellness and that you are in good spirits. For those of you who do not know me, I am Lisa Gubari uh, by trade. I practice as a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and have a healing center that uh, we specialize with integrative and holistic wellness in helping people. So I hope that uh, by being here, hello, hello Zarajan. Wow, I am so honored to have you, Mr. Donald Bush. This is great. Today I was thinking, make it a conversational piece instead of uh, informative. So a part of the conversation is finding out what is it that stresses you, causes stress for you, and how you cope with stress and how I may be of assistance to you in reducing and giving you tools and techniques to reduce stress. Hello, Sanaz. Hello, Becky. Thank you, all of you, for joining in. Grant. Hi, Grant. Um, wow. You know, uh, a part of stress is that we cannot get away from stress. We are overwhelmed, bombarded with stress, and it doesn't matter if we are watching TV and it is um, a, a police chase, or watching uh, the news with uh, politics going on, and actually news in itself, there is not much of a happy thing. Especially nowadays, even the weather is not a happy, sunny, uh, news. So facing, facing reality, facing the things that we need to cope with is one of the things that when we do not face, it affects us. And how does it affect us? It affects us emotionally, it affects us uh, mentally, and of course when our mind is busy with all the negative thoughts, um, mean spirit thoughts, that uh, self-sabotaging thoughts, ourselves. So many of you, I just want to ask you, has it been that when people talk about, if you're in a group and you're talking about stress and judgment and everything, and uh, either you or someone says, I'm my own worst critic, right? So when we say the word, I'm my worst critic, who hears it? You do. And you criticize yourself while you're telling yourself that you are your worst critic. If a little boy or a little girl were to stand in front of the mirror and they constantly berate, uh, berate themselves and say mean-spirited things, to the person in the mirror, which is that little boy and girl. What would you do as a parent or an adult? You would go and stop that child or stand next to the child, turn the child around or ask the child, why would you say something like that? You are beautiful, you are good, you are loving. And if you were to also think about it yourself and realize that that same little boy or girl is inside you and you don't even have to be in front of the mirror and you constantly berate yourself and say all the negative things or even call yourself, I'm my own worst critic. That means you are the worst person for you. You criticize yourself, you judge yourself, uh, you are mean-spirited to yourself, <laughs> let alone someone else come and do it, right? So what does that do? Every single thought, 
every single word, every single suggestion, even the way we move, it impacts us. It impacts us first. And when we feel it, then we act upon it. See, in theory, they say you think first, and then you feel it, and then you respond. I truly believe doing any kind of a work, we feel something because we are emotional beings. We buy emotionally. We connect with other people emotionally. We eat and drink emotionally. All our behaviors, everything is construed from emotions first. So when we feel, then the body reacts to what we feel. And once the body reacts, the thought process comes and says, okay, what just happened? So whatever it is that you say, the biggest organ on your body, which is the skin, it has all the pores. That's why sometimes when you go to the spa, you do all the loofahs. When you are in the shower, you loofah to cleanse and wash and take away all this dead skin. And I want to know, when do you practice? When do you practice getting rid of all the negative thoughts, ideas, concepts, self-sabotaging, judgmental, criticizing words that you say to yourself first? No wonder your body behaves with a dis-ease. No wonder your body goes into inflammation. No wonder your body goes into pain and hurt. I know a lot of people will say, what does pain have to do with what I think? Because what we think has direct response to our cellular effect, cellular uh, parts of our body. Every nerve, every muscle, every organ, every tissue, every cell in our body is alive, just like antennas. They are open to receive. Because when something good is said to us and you resonate with you, most people get this tingling goosebump, right? Do you agree? Have you had... Have you been in a conversation and someone says something and you feel, you resonate with what they are saying and you go, oh, I just got goosebumps, right? And at that very moment, your body feels it and banks that emotion. Your body banks that very moment. And it could be years later. And you would know exactly when was the talk, the discussion, what you talked about, and how you felt. It's the same way as falling in love. From the moment you can see someone over and over, over and over, until that one day, one glimpse, one word, and things change. And when that moment changes, it's miracle. It's exciting. It's sensual. It's sexy. It's exciting. It's every single thing that you can call it that brings you that feeling of spark. You will remember that moment. So as we can face and understand joy, it's the same thing that we also feel negativity. So what is it that Martyr, Martin Luther King said? And one of his quotes was, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can. So with that, I translate it to 
if I want to make a change in my life. Negativity and self-negative talk is not going to make me happy to do something. So punishing someone is not also going to make them change their inner feeling because feeling bad is not going to make them do something good because that's already a bad feeling. Shaming someone is not going to make them do something loving. So when we work with children, as a clinical hypnotherapist, when I have parents who bring children here because the child is having tantrums or the child has, uh, as they call it, OCD, even adults with OCD, what does that truly mean in my line of work? First and foremost, understanding the behavior and then resonating with the behavior and finding how we can love that behavior. Love the behavior or accept the behavior, embrace the behavior because for whatever reason, it is working for that person. If that person is constantly opening doors, closing doors, opening doors, closing doors, please. And I'm not talking about people who are medically uh, um, diagnosed. I'm just talking about when someone brings their child saying, this person is the little boy or little girl is having tantrums. And when we talk to the child, we find patterns. You see, our subconscious mind, which stores every thought, every emotion, every feeling, everything that we think, we listen, and we hear. And it stores into the subconscious every part of our behavior and habits. It's, there is a good reason. So when our body reacts, our body is reacting in a defense mode and protect mode of us. The body will never do anything to harm the person that you are, who you are inside this body, because this body is truly a protector. It's a shield. When there is a disease, the body is letting you know for you to take care of it. When there is harm coming your way, automatically you have three reactions. You fight, you flight, or you run, right? With that, back to the ADD. Whatever it is that they're doing over and over, over and over, it's giving them a sense of control. Control for whatever it is. When they feel in control, either opening and closing something 10 times. I even had a friend that no matter what would happen, she would leave doors, uh, cupboards open. She would open it, take whatever, and leave it open or leave it ajar, never closing it to the end. Now, if I were to go around, shut it, and huff and puff each time, and make a stink out of it, do you think that would help? No. But it was stopping and saying, do you know why you leave it open? Not why do you leave it open, but do you understand? Do you know the reason you leave it open? And she was like, no, I have done it for the longest time. Okay, how about if we try closing it one at a time? And do you mind if I close it? I'm not making you wrong. I just want to know. I'm going to be closing it so that you're okay. Believe it or not, within a few weeks, she started closing it, become conscious of it, because there is so much we do, our habits and behaviors, that we are not consciously doing something. But the subconscious mind 
has taken in that behavior for a good reason. Always a good reason to serve, to protect you or give you a sense of control and sanity by writing down everything that may no longer be enhancing your life or it's affecting either your life in the negative way or someone else's life that's when you can come to first when we talk about my method of evoking what was is to first bring it up and acknowledge it second it's accepting wherever and whatever it is there is nothing wrong with you it's just a behavior and that can be modified and um, modified edited changed and you can transform so the second one is accepting and loving yourself with all your quirks every single one of us has a quirk that there is no one I know that is perfect men put their pants on one leg at a time women have to pull their skirt up we all go to the bathroom the same way no one no one is immune from normal bodily functions no one is immune from being hurt or being loving and lovable and the third thing is once we embrace it and choose choose to make that change that's when it happens so no I cannot hypnotize someone to come in by force in order for them to make a change for someone else but if excuse me if that person is willing to make that change because what what they are feeling what they are doing is affecting someone they love that's excuse me pardon me that's when change can happen we move towards our most dominant thought pattern so if our most dominant thought pattern is the negativity of what's happening right now I say project project out this is why we have vision boards which I'm going to do a vision board workshop first week in February and please let me know if you are interested and I'll be more than happy to send you information we will be posting it as well again we move towards our most dominant thought pattern and if our most dominant thought pattern is I can't and it's negative everyone there nothing can happen this cannot happen that's creating negativity that's creating this ease in our thought and in our body but if just like dr martin luther king we say i have a dream and your dream is maybe this big your dream is this big or your dream is so huge that others may laugh at you or at your dream but if you truly believe in your dream it will become reality so yesterday I had a client here and as she was talking about her dream and what happened and she said well I have been dating this person which was my dream to go out with him for the last five years and it wasn't happening it was like they kept missing each other timing was wrong she was married he was married he got divorced 
She was still married. He started dating someone. She got divorced. And then they crossed paths again. Now you would think that would be perfect. That dream, she said, we had to force it to come together. But within two weeks, they realized, okay, great, we tried it, but this is not going to work. It was wrong. So one of the things is when we dream, it's awesome. And when dreams become reality, it's great. It's magnificent. But as Garth Brooks said, right, one of his songs, it's be aware of all the dreams that become a reality because sometimes we look up and we ask God to create something and make that a reality. But not all dreams that become a reality are the right one. So be thoughtful of when you make a wish, because wishes do become a reality. And there are wishes that are absolutely amazing and must become reality if it's helping someone else. It's creating love. It's bringing more love and light, not only to yourself, but to others that surround you and are with you in life. Because that's what we are. That's why we love. That's why we change for the better. We always want to change for the better. No one wants to change for the negativity. So facing everything begins with a choice of facing something that has gone wrong. It's no longer working for us. And it's not uh, beneficial. It's not enhancing who we are or the people we are with. Once we come to face that, here's another example. Judgment, jealousy, envy. Those are all negativity. Gossip is a negativity. And when people talk about someone in a negative way, not not practical, not saying this is exactly what happened, um, then it becomes a gossip. Uh, the, the difference between gossip and talking about something is that whatever you say, if you have the, I call it guts, if you have the guts to say the same thing to that person in their face, then it's no longer a gossip. Um, and negativity is poisonous. We don't even have to smoke in order to put poison in our body. So negative thoughts can take you into a downworld spiral. From OCD, from tantrums, from changing behaviors. Choose a behavior that you want to make the change, and it doesn't matter if it is weight, smoking, sleeping better, uh, becoming uh, more successful. You know how we set goals? Set a goal. You want to stop smoking because you want to have uh, better lungs. You want to breathe better. You want to go up and down the stairs easier. You want to exercise without huffing and puffing and wheezing. Wanting to drop weight. Why do you want to drop weight? Because you look better. You feel better in a smaller size. Because you like yourself more when you feel sexy. Those are all the good things. We don't. Remember, losing weight, there is no loss. Loss is something negative that we will mourn and we will sit and cry about or go after it and by golly, find it and bring it back. That's the yo-yo, emotional weight and negative way that people diet. Crash diets, 
will crash your body, but eventually your body is going to what? Fight back and bring it all back. See, it even rhymes. Um, and I didn't mean to make light out of it, but that's exactly how it is. So no more losing weight. If you are ready to make a change, let's do this. Think of everything that you want to do the same way as we get a coach, either a business coach, a personal coach, a life coach, or any therapist, or anything that you do. Think of every single thing as a marathon instead of sprinting. Sprinting, the energy or the stamina is strong, but it, will, it can go fast and short-lived. When we do anything, we have to have a short goal and a middle goal and a duration, the dream goal. So I hope you dream big, dream as big as you want, and make your goals uh, smaller. If a client comes in for stop smoking, and they have heard someone else stopped, and the wife is making sure that the husband comes and stops smoking, he walks in thinking, I have to quit because it's already become a nuisance for them. But that's not going to work as much as he walks in. And I'm saying he and she, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which gender. But right now when we're talking about, I came up with a he because my last client was this way. He walked in and said, I'm ready to quit smoking. And I said, we're not quitting. We're not quitters. Are you ready to stop smoking? Because stopping, that means we're not having one. We're not having two. We're ready to stop. We were not born smokers. And he said, yeah, because I've heard it's going to be, and I said, I'm glad you've heard. I'm glad you were referred. But each and every single person is a different person. It's an individual. It's not a copycat. We're not uh, copied. So we behave differently. We feel differently. There is no two people, even identical twins, that I know and I love them, LZ and GZ. They're different people. We are all human beings. Coming from the same parent, maybe, but still different. In spirit, we may be one, but right here, in reality, as human beings, we're all different. So each and every therapy, every hypnosis, it's not a book. I don't open a book and read from a book. I do not have scripts, but I treat my client as an individual, listening to them and modifying their thought, their words, coming to the acceptance. And then as we do the hypnosis, opening the subconscious mind to then pull all the negative or whatever. They can have only one thing that they want to change. We're not changing everything or modifying all behaviors. That one behavior. Pull it out and uh, modify that one behavior. And then right before I bring them to full conscious awareness because they're speaking to me. When in hypnosis, you are not asleep. You are not in la la land. You're not quacking. You're not barking. You hear everything. We have a dialogue, but in a more relaxed format. Deeper format. More emotionally connected to everything that you feel and you hear me speak and you speak back. Once the acceptance is there and the client or you say yes, then 
It's delving deeper into that level, changing it. Once the acceptance is there, consciously and subconsciously, then the behavior is so much easier to change and transformation can be just like this. Actually, transformation can happen at this very moment, looking at me, listening to me as you are sitting. Make a choice to change. And that change can happen instantly. You have the power within yourself to heal within. All we do is guide you to the point that you are connected consciously and subconsciously. I hope this session was beneficial to you. Modifying a tool can be just simply sitting or writing what it is that you want to change. And then as you do, put a column and write all the positive aspects of what it is that you want to change. And another column, all the negative aspects of that behavior. How is it benefiting you? All the benefits and all the things that is against, it's working against you. So if you're coughing, if you're whizzing, if uh, I'm talking about a smoker, this is just an example. If um, you cannot exercise long, if wherever you go, you have to step outside, go for a cigarette because nowadays you cannot do it everywhere. You cannot do it in the movie theaters. And then you do it real fast, just shoving it in there, eating it all up, and then, excuse me, stinking with that entire smell all over you, on your fingers, in your hair, in your face, around your mouth, and then you want to kiss someone, and if they back up. So those are all the negative aspects of it. But whatever it is, if you think you cannot change it, it's wrong, because you can and everything that has been working for you, then you write all the good things. It helps me relax. It helps me uh, sleep better. It helps me go to the bathroom better. So those are all the positives that you believe. And it's a perception because nicotine, it speeds the adrenaline. It uh, speeds every aspect of you. It's, it's tobacco. And alcohol, it, it does not relax. It brings the nervous system up. And that's why they have to do more and more thinking. That's what it's relaxing them. So that's why some behaviors and habits are only emotionally connected. The connection of the emotions, once we change that, it's become, it becomes easier to change and modify the addictive behavior. With that, I want to thank you. Use the tools, choose, and realize no matter what it is, face the reality, love yourself more, bring more light, more love, more compassion to every aspect of you. And it doesn't matter who you are, It doesn't. No matter what your accent is, no matter what color you are, what race, what gender, or any other prefer preferential uh, behaviors or habits or choices. With that, I thank you for being here. And now I'm going to stop at this very moment and see if there is anything I can respond. Hello, Timothy. How are you, my friend? Incredible master hypnotherapist. Uh, thank you so much, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hello, Dr. Ani. Uh, awesome live stream. 
You're welcome. Hi, Teresa. I'm glad that you enjoyed the explanations. And if I can be of assistance either to you or anyone, by all means, my website is healwithin.com. And also check out 3E event for all the ladies that I just want to say are incredible magnificent event is coming up and i will be doing more posts on that so watch out for the posts and you being tagged for our sixth annual 3e event coming march 24th with that i bid you goodbye god bless you and may the universal light surround you protect you and be with you have an incredible week I will see you next week.